Next, let's take a look at a more experienced desktop user or GIS analyst that uses Arc Editor in a small planning department. Planning departments have a wide range of responsibilities, but maintaining the zoning layer and associated codes and regulations is the most common. The small planning department has an Arc Editor license and has implemented the Arc SDE technology on their desktop with SQL Server Express, which is included with Arc Editor, Arc Info, and at 9.3 ArcGIS engine deployments. This allows the planning department to maintain their unique departmental data, taking advantage of version workflows and geodatabase replication. Like many city departments, planning needs center lines and addresses to assist in their workflows. However, planning doesn't maintain street center lines or addresses, so they rely on a locator that is maintained by the streets division in the public works department. They connect to the locator that resides in an enterprise Arc SDE data warehouse, which is still running ArcGIS 9.2. ArcGIS 9.3 provides direct connect drivers that are backward compatible, allowing you to read geodatabases that are 9.0, 9.1, or 9.2. The GIS analyst using Arc Editor on his desktop and the locator from the enterprise geodatabase can batch geocode a table of addresses containing reported code violations. Locating the table, performing the geocode addresses, selecting the enterprise locator, supplying some key information such as the field containing the addresses, we start the geocoding process. ArcGIS 9.3 includes many improvements with geocoding which you can see that the progress dialog that is being reported immediately gives you results about how well your geocoding is going. You can see here that we're getting immediate feedback about the number of matched, tied, and unmatched addresses. So if you feel that the results are not going too well, you can cancel at any time. The interactive rematch dialog has been reworked, making it easier to review and update unmatched or tied candidates. Looking in the upper right hand corner on the dialog, we can see the same results provided during the geocoding process. If I want to interactively rematch some of these tied candidates, I can select those from the list. I can also easily zoom to the candidates. And one of the key improvements is the pick address from map tool that is now provided on the 9.3 geocoding dialog. So as I use this tool and I click on the map, it immediately reports the address to me that I'm hovering over. So the address candidate we're looking for is 1824 Ohio Street. Once I find that location, I can right click on the map, click pick address, and that updates my status to a matched status. You can see here that many improvements have been made to the geocoding process for 9.3. After the code inspections have been geocoded, a street network can be used in relation to network analysts to assist inspectors in generating optimized routes for visiting these code violations. We often hear comments like our staff knows the area very well and we don't need driving directions. There is a big difference between directions and optimized routes. Just because someone knows the area doesn't mean that they know how to logically select and distribute a series of stops in the most effective means. Using parcel data from the Enterprise Data Warehouse, which is maintained in the Tax Assessor's Office, zoning cases can be tracked and easily visualized to assist in quickly assessing where zoning variances have been approved or denied. A new subdivision has been through the plan review process and has been approved for development. The zoning layer needs to be edited to reflect the new residential zoning for the subdivision. If I turn on the CAD drawing that was submitted by the local engineering company, it's pretty obvious where the update needs to be made. Using the assessor's parcel data, I can cut the existing zoning polygon and update the locally managed planning geodatabase. In order to maintain a spatially accurate zoning layer, I can use the snapping environment inside the edit session 
to precisely cut the polygon to match the parcel boundaries. With 9.3, we've added some new functionality to the snapping environment so I can highlight the layer. Notice that as I scroll all the way across, that layer is highlighted. I can now take this layer and promote it up the list so that it is the most important layer that I want to snap to. Now that the snapping environment is established, I can sketch the line and cut the zoning polygon layer. So I'll select the feature that I want to cut. I'll set the task to be cut polygon feature. And then using the sketch tool, I can sketch the cut location. Finishing the sketch, we can now see that the features have now been split. So now using the attribute editor, I can update the attributes for the specific zoning polygon that needs to be changed. So here, the zoning is going to be changed to R-180. So using business rules in the geodatabase, you can see that we have domains and subtypes. We also have default values that are Im immediately assigned once the selection is made. The edit has now been made, and I can post those changes to my locally managed geodatabase. The GIS analyst in the planning department has leveraged layers and reusable services from multiple departments to geocode potential code violations and update the zoning layer to reflect the, the development of a new subdivision. 